Hey everybody, I'm back with another 5-minute review. This time we're talking about FabFilters Pro Q3. This is my primary EQ when I'm doing any kind of manual EQ work. Let's take a look at the website. So as we can see here, Pro Q3, highest possible sound quality, unrivaled interface workflow. Let's get into the key features. So we've got up to 24 EQ bands. It has an optional dynamic EQ mode. It has your typical filter shapes like bell, notch, high and low shelf, high, low cut. It has an EQ match feature. It has a built-in spectrum analyzer. It has an auto gain feature. It has an intelligent solo mode, which makes it easy to find problem frequencies and hear the effect of a band. It has an undo, redo, and AB comparison features. It's available in VST, VST3, audio units, AAX, and audio suite unit, all in 32 and 64 bit. So now let's move into Hindenburg and see it in action. So here's the basic interface. You've got your different bands here. Let's start with a bell shape here. So we can pick the filter shape. We can pick how sharp it is, how many decibels per octave. So if we were going to do something like this, if we change it to 48 decibels, let's change the Q. You can see how it flattens the bottom of the filter shape. With a gentler filter slope, it's more gradual. And there, we just saw the undo function. Here we've got our frequency, we've got gain, we've got our Q. What I like about it is the way that it allows me to solo the bands to really hear where the problems are, especially when I'm sweeping and looking for resonances. Whereas with most EQs, you have to really up the gain to hear where the problems are and find those resonances. We don't have to do anything. I just increase the Q and then I start sweeping. Start a new segment here called. For me, this makes it really easy to go through and find where those frequencies are, where those resonances are, so I can quickly adjust them. Let's show how the dynamic EQ section works. Of plugins, equipment, or other tools that we use in podcast editing or in recording podcasts. So for this first episode, I'm going with the Audio-Technica ATR2100X. So the first thing I do is use the frequency analyzer to see where the sibilance seems to be centered. And I set my EQ. Now we can right click and make dynamic. So now anytime the audio hits negative 3 dB, it's going to reduce the gain even more. This is essentially how de work. They're dynamic EQs. They're focused on the sibilant range. This is one of those microphones that gets people getting started. It's a dynamic microphone. It has USB and XLR outputs, as well as a headphone output. That way you can monitor your voice as you record. This microphone generally sells for $79. And along with the Samson Q2U, these are the two affordable, most recommended mics that I, I've run into. You can see every time there's sibilance on the display, you see how, how the dynamic EQ is working. 
And now if I wanted to hear what the EQ is doing compared to flat audio, or if I maybe I set up a second EQ curve, that's where the AB comes in. So right now we're on the A setting. We click on it, it takes us to B, where I could set up a secondary EQ curve. But I tend to use this to A-B test between no EQ and the EQ curve I'm applying. Or other tools that we use in podcast editing or in recording podcasts. So for this first episode, I'm going with the Audio-Technica ATR2100X. This is one of those microphones that gets recommended. So this is obviously a quick overview of what, what we can do with the Pro-Q3. This is my primary EQ when I'm doing manual EQ work. It's also the EQ I use when I'm coaching or training editors, just because it's so easy to demonstrate visually what I'm doing and what I'm hearing to make that build that connection between what we're hearing and what we're seeing. I hope you found this video helpful. If you like this, if you like the content that I'm putting out there, Please like and subscribe the videos. And I know my camera just moved. My cat is sitting right under it, Ziggy. He decided now is the time to move a little bit. So that's what you get. I'll talk to you all next time.